10 truths you should know about Jesus' second coming. We know that Jesus came first time as a lamb, but He is coming again as a lion. He came first time to suffer, but He's coming again to reign. He came first time and there was no place for Him to be born, but He's coming second time on the white horse and He's coming with His saints. He's coming to establish His kingdom. And about His second coming, there's so many verses in the Bible. And today we're going to break a few things down for us and go verse by verse to explain some truths concerning Jesus' second coming. In Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 it says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and His disciples came to show Him the buildings of the temple. Then Jesus said, Do you not see any of these things? Assuredly I say to you, that not one stone shall be left here upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And disciples went down and verse 3, it says the following that, when He sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? Which things? The things concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. And then they asked the second question, What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? So pretty much the disciples are asking three questions. When will the destruction of Jerusalem take place? When will be the sign of your coming? And when will be the end of age? I already did a video on the end times, the signs of the end times. The answer to the first question is when will these things be? The destruction of Jerusalem, Jesus explains in Matthew 25 verses 15 all the way till verses 20 and as well as verses 34. And He says that within this generation that these things, meaning the destruction of Jerusalem will take place. And we know that not long after what the Emperor came in and he besieged Jerusalem and Jerusalem was conquered and the temple was destroyed and the words of Jesus were fulfilled. What is the sign of your coming? Is another question that they asked and Jesus explains that a little bit later in verse 30 of Matthew 24 that the sign of Jesus is coming not signs but the sign is his public appearing the sign of Jesus is coming is his public appearing so there's not signs of his coming there is one sign of his coming it's his public meaning his coming will be public and as we're going to dive in right now and you're going to see a little bit more on that. So let's dive in. Number one is that the second coming of Jesus will happen after the tribulation. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then the verse 30, it talks about then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So after the great tribulation that Jesus will come again. The second truth about the coming of Jesus is that Jesus will appear in heaven. That is actually the sign of His coming. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, meaning that Jesus' second coming will be visible. Jesus' second coming will be public. Jesus' second coming will be something that everyone will be able to see as it says in Matthew 24 verse 30. The third truth about the coming of Jesus, His second coming. Jesus' second coming will be as visible as lightning. In Matthew 24 verse 27 it says, For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So His first coming, it wasn't visible to the whole earth. In fact, it was pretty hidden. Shepherds, the wise men, you know, few people there and there. But His second coming will be completely different it will be as lightning. You know, when lightning flashes, a lot of people can see that. But the Bible says, as from the east all the way to the west, everyone will be able to see Jesus coming. That is so exciting. Truth number four, Jesus' second coming will cause all the tribes to mourn. As I've read already, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all of the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. There are other verses that talk about Israelites that they will weep and they will see Him you know, whom they rejected before. And so this second coming will be a glorious, glorious event that we all as Christians are looking forward to. Truth number five, Jesus' second coming will be seen and it will not be secret. Again, the verse that I read, verse 30, is that they all will see, the Bible says, they will see the Son of Man. 
meaning it will not be secret, it will not be mystical, meaning it will not be spiritual, it will not be something in your heart, it will be something you can see physically with your eyes. Truth number six, the second coming of Jesus will be on the clouds with power and glory. As we've read in verse 30 of Matthew 24 is that the, the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. In fact it talks about remember when Jesus went up to heaven and the angels came and they said the way you see him go into heaven is the same way he will come back. Jesus went to heaven in the cloud. He's coming back in the cloud. People will see him as it also says in Revelation 1 7. Behold he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him even though who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him even so amen number seven at Jesus's second coming there will be a sound of a trumpet so not only it will be like lightning not only he will appear from heaven not only that he will come after tribulation not only the tribes of the earth will mourn not only it will be seen it will be in glory power and a cloud but there will be a sound accompanying his coming as it says in first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17 for the Lord himself would, will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to heaven with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall be with the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15 51 52 Behold I tell you a mystery we shall all not sleep we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So at the coming of Jesus we see that there will be a sound, a, a shout will come from heaven and a archangel will sound a trumpet of God. There will be a voice of an archangel and as well as the trumpet sound. So it's going to be glorious. There will be crazy sounds taking place. It, it will shake the whole earth. I think it's going to be also live stream because everyone's going to pull out their phones and start streaming this amazing glorious event. Truth number eight. Jesus is coming with his saints. As we see in 1 Thessalonians 3 13, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So Jesus is not just coming with the heaven's army. He's coming with his saints. As we've read that we will meet him in the air and we will come with him. Truth number nine, at Jesus' coming the dead will be raised and we will be changed to meet Him in the air. As I've read and I'm going to read this verse one more time. It talks about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. As well as 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. So it's talking about the same event. The trumpet will sound, the Lord will descend from heaven. This is not talking about a secret rapture which I will have a separate video concerning that. This is talking about the coming of Jesus and we don't see one reference in the Bible of Jesus' two second comings. We see only one second coming of the Lord. That's the one that He will come with the saints who will meet Him in the air to reign on the earth. So let me finish the verse. But I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in the moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. And so that tells us that at Jesus' second coming the dead will be raised and we will be changed to meet Him in the air. And the truth number 10 is that Jesus will arrive on the mountain of Olives in Jerusalem. It's the same mountain that He left the earth from after His resurrection and it's the same mountain He is coming back to. Zechariah 14 4 and in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives which faces Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west making it very large valley 
and half of the mountain shall be moved forward the north and half of it towards the south. And so we see that Jesus is coming back and these are the details the scriptures provide us. We don't know exactly how that will take place but we know it will be visible, we know it will be loud, we know it will be triumphant, we know it will be like a lightning, we know that people will be able to see it, we know the reaction of the earth is going to be a lot of weeping, a lot of crying and we know that we are coming together with the Lord. Those who have died, they, their spirits will reunite with their bodies and those of us who have not died, we will meet the Lord in the air and come down with Him to be on this earth. I'm going to read you one of the most glorious verses in the scriptures about this time of Jesus' coming. Revelation 19 verses 11 all the way till verse 16. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with robe dipped in blood and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword and with it he shall strike the nations and he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. He himself treads on the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. He has on his robe and on his tie a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Have you noticed armies, horses, people dressed in white, Jesus coming to reign, to rule, to execute the wrath of God upon the enemies the throne of Antichrist, the false prophet, the false teacher and the whole system of godless world that churned in rebellion against God and oppressed the humanity. And this is going to be His coming. It will not be a gentle lamb. It will be a fierce, bold, powerful, mighty lion. He won't be coming on a donkey. He will be coming on a horse. He won't be coming defenseless, innocent, pure, condemned to die. He will come as true faithful, his clothes dipped in blood and he will come to crush the enemies, to crush the kingdom of darkness and to reign and to rule. The word in the New Testament, the most famous word for the coming of the Lord is parousia and parousia is when an important person was coming to a city, a delegation from the city would go out to meet him and then escort him on his way to the city. This word is used 24 times in the New Testament. Out of these, six refer to the coming of individuals like Stephen, Fortinanus and Achilles and Titus, the physical presence of Paul himself this word is used for and the seventh use is to the coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. The other 17 uses of this word parousia is used to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ except in one case which is referred to the coming of the day of God, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 12. And therefore this word parousia that is used 17 times to describe the second coming of Jesus. The meaning of this word is that a, pr a famous person would come to Rome and the citizens of Rome, a delegation would come to meet him and together with that famous or that known person would walk into Jerusalem. And so that is that word that is used in the New Testament to describe the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our meeting with Him in the air and then coming together with Him. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you were encouraged. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to place your trust in Him today. He is coming soon. If you don't believe it, look at your news. Look at what's happening in this world. This world is going crazier and crazier. And all of that we see today is just a rehearsal. It's a practice for the coming of the Antichrist which will usher the Great Tribulation. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will come and He will turn the kingdoms of this world into the kingdom of our God. It's time to get right with God. It's time to surrender your life. It's time to live for Jesus and to get ready for His second return. If you enjoyed this content, click thumbs up to the video. Drop it in the comments of what you learned about this thing and don't forget to subscribe. I have another video concerning 
rapture. I know it's a very controversial topic about when will rapture happen and as you can probably already have seen in this content about my understanding of when this will happen and I know you probably have a lot of questions so don't hesitate watch the other video concerning rapture where I dive in a little bit deeper about when will rapture take place and we will break down the scriptures and I hope that you will be encouraged and prepared for what's to come.